And the number back toward the mound. Got a chance to be a base hit. Cooper will have to make everything perfectly and does not. And there it is. His first major league hit. Here's the stretch. The one-two pitch. Swing and a line drive in the gap in right center. Drops in a base hit. Here comes the winning run. Strange from third. Alex Rodriguez wins the ball game. There's a fly ball down home. Right field line. He might get a cycle out of this one. He's digging for two. And he's got himself a double. That's the cycle. <laughs> And that is hit well into right center field. Anderson goes back and see you later. There it is. Alex Rodriguez is now a 40-40 player. 24 years of age. The pitch swung on and belted. Line drive, fly away, Aaron. His second home run of the ball game, and he is in Franco, baby. On what happens in the offseason. And he drives one to deep left. Back near the wall and gone. Well, if that's the way he says goodbye, he does it with some style. I couldn't be happier to be in Texas. I've always liked Texas. I've always loved playing here. I've played well here over the years. Now, let's listen to the announcement for A-Rod. He's getting his wish. From 1994 to 2000, Alex Rodriguez played for the Seattle Mariners as a shortstop. He was a part of the 1995, 1997, and 2000 playoff runs for the Seattle Mariners. 2000 was arguably where he had the most impact for the Mariners, putting up his usual MVP numbers of 41 home runs and 132 RBIs with a win above replacement of above 10, finishing second in the MVP voting. The Mariners unfortunately fell short to the New York Yankees in the American League Championship Series. Ultimately, in the following offseason, he left for the Texas Rangers for a contract worth 10 years, $252 million, making him the highest paid player in Major League history at the time. Since then, Mariner fans forgot about his contributions in Seattle and only remember him for leaving Seattle, calling him names like Hayrod, a traitor, selfish, you name it. Throughout his time after Seattle, fans just wouldn't let it go and boo him every time he stepped into Seattle. However, it still doesn't seem clear what really went down in the free agency, and I am here to clear it up, and this is a story I've been wanting to tell for a long time. Before I explain, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more content, as I do have a lot of ideas for the future. After the 2000 season, Alex Rodriguez became a free agent and he was arguably the most coveted free agent in Major League history at the time. When initially asked about the free agency, this is what he said according to the book Shipwrecked by John Wells. If I have to say something, I'd say I'm leaning towards Seattle because that's the known. It's my responsibility to get all the data, make the unknowns unknown, and make my decision. I'm definitely apprehensive about the situation because my comfort level is so high in Seattle. Even with those statements, it was still unclear whether he was going to stay in Seattle and Lou Pinnell expressed in his book. Despite the constant speculation in the press, it was something that I hadn't given a whole lot of thought because during the 2000 season, primarily because I couldn't conceive of the Mariners ever letting Alex leave, especially after having had to trade both Randy Johnson and Junior. And he is right. It would be quite a disappointment if the Mariners lost three of their superstars in less than two years. Since their intentions to trade Tino Martinez after the 1995 season was to save money for all of those three all-stars. Now I'm going to go over the possible reasons why Alex Rodriguez left Seattle. First will be the fans perspective, then there will be the other fans perspective like myself, and then Lou Pinella's perspective. You know the story tonight. Alex Rodriguez makes his return to Safeco Field. Kim and Monroe, you're on KJR. Andrew in the car phone. Every time there's a ground ball hit in his direction, you boo him before he even makes the play. And Boo the crap out of him. The guy's useless. I'm going to boo him tonight because I hate the guy. His ego is going to drive Texas into the ground. I'm going to boo. I'm going to boo him. I'll probably boo. I'll probably boo. Boo! I'm just going to turn my back. He had said, you know, that... It wasn't about the money, and in the end it was. And so I'm going to carry a sign that says, sold out, because I think that's what he did. 
There was a mix of reports on what the Mariners had offered to Alex Rodriguez, but the most notable was that Seattle offered five years, 94 million, with an option for the team to decline the last two years of the contract. In that case, Alex had every right to decline that contract as that was more than a cheap offer for what he was worth. According to the book, Shipwrecked, written by John Wells, he expressed, Seattle was the only team out of the eight that didn't offer me the 10 years. It was hard walking away from the team, but it wasn't hard walking away from that. And further expressed, the Mariners offered him less than the year before. Peter Gammons ESPN reported that the Mariners didn't make an effort to keep A-Rod, disclosing that Howard Lincoln nor Chuck Armstrong didn't travel to Miami for a critical meeting the Mariners had with A-Rod and Scott Boris in early December. They were both vacationing in Hawaii. If that were to be the case, then I would put more of the blame on Howard Lincoln and Chuck Armstrong than Alex Rodriguez to be honest. Now here is the perspective by Lou Pinella, which was in his book. When the Mariners were attempting to make an offer on Alex Rodriguez, here's what happened. General Manager Pat Gillick, Manager Lou Pinella, Mariners CEO Howard Lincoln, Mariners Chairman John Ellis, and Mariners President Chuck Armstrong went to Dallas in hopes to discuss a contract with Alex Rodriguez. Here is what Lou Pinella said in his book. I never imagined that greatness being achieved anywhere else but in Seattle. I still felt that way when Pat, Howard, John, Chuck, and I went to the December winter meetings in Dallas and prepared to make our pitch to Alex and his agent Scott Boris. I especially hoped to talk personally to Alex. Pat and the others informed me that they were prepared to offer Alex a six-year deal worth $120 million. I felt very comfortable with that. It was a hell of a commitment, but when Boris arrived at our suite, Without Alex, I immediately felt uneasy. There was very little small talk. Boris got right to the point and wanted to know what our offer was. When Pat presented it to him, Boris said simply, okay, thanks, you're not even close, and walked out the door. That was it, not even a counter offer. We were astounded. We didn't know if he was bluffing or if he really meant it. And it turned out Scott Boris did actually mean it because Alex Rodriguez ended up signing a 10-year, $252 million contract with the Texas Rangers. Further in the book, Lou Pinella said this as well. I wish I could have gotten the chance to talk to Alex personally. I couldn't blame him for taking that offer. It was a business decision and Boris didn't open the door any further for us. I did feel that if we had gotten Alex in the room, we could have convinced him to stay. But Boris came in alone and once he took over, all the emotions went out of it. It became all business. When Alex called me to say goodbye, it was a very painful conversation for both of us. I called Lou after I made my decision. Alex said in an interview for this book, I told him, I'm gonna sign with Texas, but I wanted to tell you first so you wouldn't have to read it in the news. Obviously, it was a very sad day for me because playing for Lou, I was spoiled. I had great protection and he was a great mentor for me. There were tears on both sides. And years later, when Alex Rodriguez retired, he also expressed this about Lou Pinella. For me, today is about really thanking all the fans and all the coaches, managers, people that gave me an opportunity. I think about Woody Woodward, who drafted me with Roger Youngward. I think about Lou Pinella and Edgar Martinez, who were great teachers and mentors to me at 18 years old. I've always said I wish I had five more years with Lou Pinella because I think I would have benefited from his tutelage and his mentorship. So I'm gonna take all sides of the story and connect them all together based on my interpretation. So Alex preferred to stay in Seattle, but he put all of his trust on his agent, Scott Boris. Then the Mariners tried to make an offer and Scott Boris happened to be in the room without A-Rod. With limited communication, Boris walked out of the door fast without allowing negotiations. Then Howard Lincoln and Chuck Armstrong gave up and went off to vacation in Hawaii. And then Alex Rodriguez just signed the contract with the Texas Rangers. At the end of the day, I didn't blame Alex for taking that money at all, as he did work hard for it, especially through a tough childhood. Furthermore, I don't like it when fans say that baseball players are overpaid and spoiled. Because of the paths that these players had to take to get to that level was excruciating and painful and a lot of hard work. There was a good video made by Eric Sim who explained his difficult life in the minor leagues. Also subscribe to his channel and check out his video. Now do I think that Alex Rodriguez is some kind of angel or something? No, since he does have a self-promoting image, since he does have a picture of himself in a centaur form. <laughs> And if Alex Rodriguez really did enjoy playing for Seattle, especially under Lou Pinella, then he should have been more part of the conversation with Scott Boris in that meeting with the Mariners. But this story still does deserve multiple perspective than the one Mariner fans are used to. Most of the responsibilities of the Mariners not getting A-Rod to return to the Mariners is the management for not negotiating a better deal before Texas came in 
signed with a big contract, but also Scott Boris did not help either, as he has been a tough agent to work with, and he has gotten his clients more money than expected. And this guy had something to say about Scott Boris as well. Check it out. So to start with, we come up with when we're drafting players, we take a look at who the player agents are. And if a player has Scott Boris as an agent coming out of high school or college, we will do everything we can not to take that player because we don't want to be involved with Boris at all. End of the day, when it comes to a story or situation, there will always at least be two sides of the story. Now, what do you think of this whole story of Alex Rodriguez leaving Seattle? Leave your thoughts in the comments. And if you did like this video, hit the like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more future content.